It's just before 11 o'clock here at Wayne 15, and we're going to do some science experiments in the cold. Temperatures right now down near 12 below zero. Feels like temperatures down near 30 to 40 below. So we're going to see how some things interact in this cold weather. We have an old t-shirt. We're going to wet it down, see how long it takes to become frozen solid, essentially. And we also have an ice tray. We're going to make some ice. Usually freezers are set right around zero degrees already. It takes about three to four hours to make some ice. We'll see how long it takes in these bitter, bitter cold temperatures that are well below zero. So you can already start to see some frost developing on the shoulder part of this t-shirt and it's already, we've been out here for maybe 15 seconds and it's already starting to get, lose its flexibility. So we'll see what happens after maybe a couple hours out here. Look at that. Back to check on our t-shirt and ice cubes. Our ice cubes we checked on right around 12.30. So after about an hour and a half of these ice cubes being out here, they were already rock solid. And obviously by the time we get into later on in the afternoon hours, they're normal ice. Here's the t-shirt. It has been approximately say four hours or so with this thing. Look at this. It is rock solid and you can just bend it right over your knee. No problem at all. You can just hear just how frozen this thing actually is. It feels like plastic in your hands. That's how cold it is that a wet t-shirt in four hours. And you noticed how quickly it started to change over to getting some frost on it almost immediately. This is the result of very, very cold temperatures. Last week, you may have seen some of those boiling water being thrown into the cold air videos. Well, today, obviously, it's much, much colder with those temperatures still well below zero. So we're gonna see what happens whenever we take some boiling water out of this micro that's been in this microwave for the last uh, two minutes, two and a half minutes or so, and we're gonna throw it in the air. So what happened there was that the boiling water is giving off so much water vapor that the super cold air that cannot hold much water vapor, it allows the hot boiling water to basically become ice crystals pretty much immediately as soon as it is thrown up into the air. A very, very cool thing to do whenever it is this cold outside. Another thing the bitter cold does is freeze the bubbles essentially on contact with the ground. This is a combination of some soap and some water and you just give it a nice little blow. So here's one of our bubbles that we have down here. You can take a close look. You can see how it pretty much has frozen right on contact and whenever you give a little poke to it, it deflates and basically just turns into nothing. Very, very cool. Another thing we're gonna try is the anti-griddle. You probably recognize this from social media or maybe you've even been to one of these ice cream parlors where they pour cream over top of a very cold skillet or griddle. And that's what we're gonna try and do. We have an egg in here that we're gonna try and make a fried egg, some nice tasty breakfast food uh, for you for this morning. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Take a look at that. Almost immediately, the egg whites started to freeze. You can see how it scattered throughout the pan. This pan has been out here for about an hour or two since this morning where temperatures were down near 13 below. And you can see that it's all continuing to freeze that egg white, like I said, pretty much immediately. Take a look at this. This egg is now frozen in there. It looks like it's cooked, but it's so cold that it even, oh, there we go. It's the yolk wasn't cooked itself. The egg white though, frozen completely solid. This egg is probably say, maybe over medium if you were to get it on a breakfast sandwich, but definitely don't eat anything like this because it actually isn't cooked. It's basically just frozen.